Praise God. I would like to, actually it's kind of like offline. I was just thinking about how no matter what happens to us, how dark it looks, how bleak, how disastrous, we know, for the Bible says that we know, that all things work for the good of those that love God. And that are, call, are called according to his purpose. And I remember when I first moved into our house, and, uh, and my wife would say to me, can you make a little closet so that we can put our vacuum in there? Because I have to bring it to the big, big closet. And, you know, and I would look at my chimney. I know this is going to sound almost like offline. Please understand the kind of spirit that I'm into. Amen. And I remember looking at my chimney. I would look at my chimney and say, my chimney is about this, this wide. But the wall this wide. And I said, geez, I wonder if, if this was empty in between there, you know. And for a long time, I would say that to myself, but I never did it. Until one day, again, please understand the spirit. My son, my oldest son, much older then, he got into a problem with a girl. He was seeing a girl that I disliked. And uh, one day I tried to confront him. And I guess I went a little too far. I really got in his face. You know, that red-blooded Portuguese people, you know how it is. When we want to talk, we want to talk. Don't close the door on me, you know what I mean? And uh, I got up to his face. And as I got up to his face, he kind of like pushed me. He's a big boy. And he kind of like pushed me away. And when I pushed me, I, he pushed me right into the wall, and I, I, broke, I broke right through the, 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 the sheetrock. And I looked. <laughs> it's funny because he said, I'm sorry, Dad. I didn't, mean, I'm so, I didn't want to do this to you, Dad. And I looked. He said, wow, perfect closet. I know this sounds strange, but, that I'll, but all things work for the good of God. Amen? You know, my son, my oldest son, he's not serving God, but he has a wonderful guy hard worker, has a wonderful wife, beautiful children. She is a wonderful wife to him, takes care of the kids, and she's beginning to listen to the gospel. And she's telling me how she wants to go to church, but he doesn't want to go. Look at this. And I just say, Lord, just you, you have, your ways are better than mine. And I believe that one day they will come to the Lord. And now, I get back to my youngest son. That's a different story. About three months ago, I believe it was, you know, three months ago, we had a, uh, a Ford Montego. Yeah. That's a Montego, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and our transmission let go, so it was too much money. That guy had a lot of mileage on it. And I said, you know, we're just going to get rid of it. So I had to give my, my wife my car so that she will do her thing. She, she cleans some homes, some houses. She helps this woman and everything. So she's got the car, my Cadillac, and now I'm walking. And it's been like that for a while. But uh, my youngest son, after he had lost his license, got his license, so he decided to buy a car. In the first week that he bought a car, please understand. He got arrested. And uh, not a go, I'm not going to go into details, but you know, what I, you know what I'm talking about. So I said, Lord, what good is all of this? I mean, my wife, you know how women are. You know how moms are. You know how they are. You know, they, they just began to freak out. He was in court with her. I didn't go. I said, I'm not going. You go with them. It's, it's too much for me as it is. So she went with them and... And it was decided, the judge said, you will be in jail until May, until we figure out what's going on in this case and if we can prove anything that's going on. And my wife came home, naturally, you must understand, crying and beside herself. And I said, you know what? I've been praying that God does his perfect will. Whatever it takes to bring this guy to his knees, so be it, God. But the good thing in all of this is that he can't drive. <laughs> Guess what? 
I got a car. So through all of this, I see God's hand. When my, what the enemy means for evil, God can turn it for good. And I know one day that my son will be a man of God. Amen? I praise the Lord for this wonderful, you know, I don't know about you guys, but the, this, the music that you guys worship God here, it just touches me. It's so holy. I don't know how people cannot just cry in the presence of God. Like I saw my sister there going there. It, it's so awesome. I, I, I'm so glad that I, that I have a friend that knows how to get into the presence of God through this holy music. Amen? Praise the Lord. God is good. He saves us. He forgives us. He writes our name in the book of heaven. He's the Lord of lords, the King of kings, the fairest of thousands. He's the rock of ages. Hallelujah. He said, I will be back. I'll come to get you, and he's coming. Amen. I don't know when, but I don't care when. All I know is I got to be ready. Amen. Praise God. And I am ready. I may have my time, my times of failure and my times of uh, discouragement many times. And, you know, the enemy comes to us and puts all these things in our minds, trying to discourage and stop us. But we know that all things work for the good of goes of God. And we know that God is in control. And you know what? Jesus has won the battle. Amen. And we are victorious in him. Amen. Tonight I'd like to talk about seven things in Scripture that are dead. Now I brought this teaching in my church and if, it's, if, it's, if the same thing happens <laughs> that happened in our church, we're going to be just on the first, the first one. <laughs> uh, but because I believe that God gives us things. It's amazing. I was asking the Lord, please give me something so I can bring to the church. I'm talking about our, our congregation. And all of a sudden, I opened this verse, and it just popped right out. You know, it just came alive to me. And I said, okay, God, I know what you're talking about. So I would like to speak to you the same thing that I did in our service in our church which is about seven things that in Scripture are dead. Amen? Would you please open your Bibles with me, please? And please understand that uh, Ephesians, please, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. I need, we need to understand what is, what is death. Death, you know. For most people, common people, people that don't know the Lord, death to them is the end of everything. Right? Well, you know, you die, it's, oh, it's over. You, be, you extinct, you become extinct, and that's it. But in reality, biblical, biblically speaking, and what the Lord says and what the Lord teaches, death is actually separation. It's actually, you know, Isaiah said, your sins separate you from your God. So every time you look in the Bible, the word death is actually separation. It's not that you, be, you die and, and you cease to exist. When you die, if you're a man or a woman of God, hallelujah, but your spirit is alive, your body dies, the Bible says you go to paradise. So you continue alive. You know, Jesus said, he who believes in me, though he is dead, he will live. Amen. So we need to understand that death to God is not this thing that humans are portraying that once you die, everything is over. There's nothing else after that. But in reality, that is not what the Bible teaches. Death is always separation. Death separates a man from a, a, a wife, a son from a daughter, amen, or a husband from his kids. It's a separation. When you die physically, your body goes to the grave, but your soul and spirit, if you're a man of God, you go to heaven, you go to paradise. That's what the Bible says. Jesus turned to the man on his way. He said, today you would be with me in paradise. So when I die, hallelujah, when this body goes to the tomb and it be rotted away, it doesn't matter. My soul and my spirit, which is the essence of this person that I am, will live eternally. And I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to go to paradise. I'm going to live forever. Amen. So we need to understand that. You know, you, you, you look at uh, 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 when the Bible says that God created Adam and Eve. Do you remember that? And the Bible says he created 
a beautiful garden, right? Isn't that what the Bible says? It's a beautiful garden. And he put all kind of trees and animals. And you know the story. And, and Adam was so intelligent that he gave all the names. You know, you, you couldn't give another name to a cow. A cow looks like a cow. I don't, I don't know. A horse looks like a horse. I mean, that, that dude was very, very intelligent. A crocodile looks like a crocodile. You know what I'm saying? That's an intelligent man. And you know what happens? The Bible says God said to them that this beautiful couple who lived in ecstasy and pure joy. Can you imagine every single day God will come from his throne? Did you ever stop to think about that? God coming from his throne to come and visit? The Bible says that. I, I didn't say that. He would come in the cool of the afternoon and he would visit with Adam and Eve. What a privilege. I, I, if it was me, I would say that, Dave, man, I just can't wait. Wait, if the Lord come, when, you, know, when, you know, when he gets here, it, it's even better. I mean, this is great as it is. But when you feel the, yeah, you, know, you know how it is, right? It's good to be in the house of God. But when you feel his presence, Ah, I mean, it's worth being here. I, 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 I don't know about you. I don't know what you're going through. But I'm going through some tough things in my life. But that don't matter. Why? Because his presence fulfills everything that I need. Amen. And the Bible says that God would come into the cool of the afternoon and, and commune with, the, with this man and this woman. What a privilege. I mean, they had everything. I mean, they had all the fruit that they could eat. They had all the vegetables that they could have. Amen. But yet God said, but there's something I want. I want, I want, to, I want, to, I want to test you. That's, that's actually what it was. I want to see if you're really going to love me for what I am. Not just because everything that I give you, but what I am. Because, see, God doesn't want us to be robots. He wants us to be human beings with feelings and to love him voluntarily. Hallelujah for what he is. And the Bible says that God said to them, he said, you can eat. I mean, I don't know how many different species of, of you know, oranges and, and figs and, and grapes. I mean, they must have had everything there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and yet, God said to them, but of the tree, of the knowledge, of good and evil, don't even go near it. Don't eat it. I mean, you, you, you know, there are preachers that God said, don't even touch it. That, the Bible doesn't say that. You know what I'm saying? But it would be better not to be near it. You know what I'm saying? And you know the story. You know what happens. You know, Adam and Eve and even Adam and, you know, you know uh, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Men, to you. The Bible says that a virtuous woman does what? But a crazy woman, a foolish woman, will bring down her house. Let me tell you something. You can be the greatest man in this world, but if your wife is foolish, your house is going to fall. I have seen it happen over and over and over. The guy is a hard work. He does everything to make everything work, but his wife is foolish. And everything falls because that's the way it is. Now, <laughs> the Bible says that Eve, <laughs> I love Eve, I love my wife, but I know that I need my wife to be virtuous, to be a God freeing woman because if she's not, we're in big trouble. And I thank God my wife is that type of woman. She's a God-fearing woman. She Listen, every single morning, the first thing that woman does is put somebody preaching on, on, the, on, on TV. And she listens to preaching and to worship the whole day. And it's amazing. And I thank God. And the first thing when I woke up, here comes Jesus into my mind. <laughs> Isn't that good? Isn't that wonderful to be able to lay down with the Lord and wake up with the Lord? <laughs> I mean, that, that's what you call living. <laughs> I don't know about you. You know, that's what I call living. Jesus said, I have come to give you life and give it to you in abundance. Hallelujah. I mean, when you encounter Jesus, you've encountered true life. Praise God. Thank you, hon. Thank you. And, you know, the Bible says that she looked at the fruit, and it was desirable to the eyes. You know, we have to be very careful where we place our eyes. Please, I know I'm talking to mature people, mature Christians, 
But you have to be very careful because our eyes, we can begin to look at things and begin to lust after those things. The Bible says that she looked at the fruit and it was pleasant to the eye. Hey, not everything that looks good, not everything that shines is real gold. So, and the Bible says that she desired it looked good. And there's a lot of things in this world that the, that, that the enemy can bring and it looks good. And it begins to shine almost. But in the end, it brings death. Especially young people. I mean, today young people, they're surrounded by sin. I mean, it's, uh, it's television. It's, uh, it's uh, technology. You, you know, they have the phone. They can get into anything they want. I mean, let me, let me tell you what happened to me the other day. And I'm telling you what I happened to me. I'm talking about Pastor Man. I'm not talking about anybody else. Um, I, 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 and I'm talk, I, know, I know we're talking about death here. Don't, 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 I'm not going to get out of it. You know what I'm saying? But I, what I'm trying to say is this. Jesus said that your eyes are the windows of your what? body, your soul, your body, your spirit. So, you know, you know that old saying that the fish always dies by the mouth. In reality, that's not what he does by. He dies by what he saw. Right? He looks at it. And then he goes after it. <laughs> you see, that's the thing. That's how the enemy does. He puts things in our sight. And it looks good. And it's pleasant to the eye. But in reality, behind all that, he's a killer. He wants to destroy your marriage. He wants to destroy your son. He wants to destroy the relationship that you have with your son or with your husband. And especially young people. Oh, today I feel for them because sin is so bombardment. They are so bombarded in school with friends, even teachers that are into witchcraft. Teachers that are teaching children that they can talk to spiritual beings. Hi, my, my brother, my sister, we are in big trouble. I mean, look around. When, when, when people are killing baby babies for no reason at all because they don't want that child to be born, you know what I'm saying? Because it's going to be a nuisance to them, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to deform their body. You see, they have to be skinny. Hey, listen to me. That's not the whole deal here. The whole deal is what's inside of you. It's your soul. It's your spirit. You may not look good on the outside, but what's inside of you is a treasure. It is gold. Amen. And I remember talking about looking at something and desiring it. It's pleasant to the eye, you know. And, you know, just because you're old doesn't mean nothing. You can still get hooked by it, you know. It doesn't matter. I'm 62 years old. I still have two eyes. And sometimes you look at something and you say, oh, God, have mercy on my soul. You know what I mean? You know? So I, I decided I was paying too much uh, cable. And I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get this fire stick. You ever heard of it, fire stick by Amazon? They say you can get all kinds of uh, programs on it. It's all for free. And I said, wow, that's awesome. I took, my, I took the, the cable out of my, my upstairs TV, and I said, I, and I, I sent away for the fire stick. And, on, and there is a lot of great programs. I love Lucy, Andy Griffith Show, all those old shows that I, I love them. I, I love to watch them. And, but I, as I was watching, and I was going through different you know, different uh, episodes and themes and movies and all that. Oh, different channels. And I came up at generals. <laughs> That's a pretty good time. Generals, soldiers, and slaves. And it looked, it was all Roman. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, this must be real. I love Roman. I love to, to look at the history. And you know, so I'm saying, wow, this must be real. And I mean, this was top-notch, Pastor. I mean, they, they when it started, I said, Oh, man, the, the, the costumes, the, the, everything was so, so genuine, you know, even the people, the men. And I said, wow, this is great. And it, it's going through these battles, and I love it. Battles, and, and you know, you know how today is, you know. <laughs> it's pretty violent, you know. But I, I was wondering, I wanted to hear the story. I wanted to know what it was all about, you know what I mean? And all of a sudden, it went from one, and, I, and, and I'm in my bed. I'm, I'm, I'm laying down on my bed. My TV is on. My wife is next to me sleeping. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and I'm, I've got a very low. I'm li and all of a sudden, the scene comes up, and it's, <gasps> oh, I grab, I, 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 I grab, I'm, I'm trying to hit that good. And then what I did, what I, I froze it on the top. I grabbed the top. Something happened to me. But there is something. 
and in me. There is such a fear of God that my eyes are pure. I want to look at pure things. I want to look at things that please my Lord. I want to look at things, hallelujah, that will not bring death into my life. Hallelujah. Because what we look, Jesus said, your eyes are the windows of your soul and your spirit. And if your eye is dark, everything else is dark. So we need to be careful. Young man, stay away from that friend that says, look at this. This is so awesome. No. If it kills me spiritually, I would rather die physically, but not to die spiritually. And the Bible says that the woman took it, ate it, and guess what she did? This is what I mean about women. They're powerful. I'm, you women are powerful. I'm, I'm the head guy. I'm the macho man here. I'm the one that's... Yeah, 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 you better be careful. Why didn't he say, hey, woman, what are you doing from the beginning? You know what I mean? Because he must have been next to her, right? He must have been with her. I'm sure he was always with her, right? Why didn't he say, no, 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 let's not go to that tree there. Remember what the, no, 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 no. But the influence a wife can have, a mom can have. Hey, be an influence to your son and to your husband to look at things of God and not the things of this world. Because the things of this world, they are temporal. They are perishing. They are just for a moment. They're here and they're gone. It's like the air. You feel it and it disappears. It's like a vapor. It shows up and it disappears. It's like a flower that is beautiful today and tomorrow is dead and it's no good for nothing. My friend, look at things that are eternal. Put your eyes on things of God. Put your eyes on things of heaven. Look up. E como o português diz, o banana do marido. <laughs> I'm the bad man. I'm the, the guy here. Hey, que manda. Hey, I'm the one. Hey, I'm the. The wife says, have it, sweetie. Yeah, have it. Don't you, Damatro? Have it with me. Right? Why? And you know what happens. But yet, this is what I mean. A woman can have such an influence on a man that he can, she can bring her whole household into ruins. Now, the Bible says that they ate. Was it that dummy, that knucklehead? What didn't he say to her? Don't even go near it. The Lord said we can't do that. Aren't you the, aren't you the head of the house? Aren't you that man? Well, what happened? I'll tell you what happened. A woman can bring you to ruin. Kings have fallen because of women. Right? Kings. David. The greatest fire in all history. His thousand and giants of it. But one woman, all she had to do was go. This is where he gets us. That's how he does it. He, he, hey, don't think that, that the enemy is not going to put some ugly duckling in front of you. He's going to get the best that he can to get you to fall. Because he wants you to die. He wants you to take us to hell. But thank God. God, our eyes are fixed on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. And the Bible says she gave it to her husband, and the Bible says that they died. And I, and I, I remember when I first became a Christian, and I didn't know much about the Bible, and I would say, I don't understand it. The, the Bible says if they ate of the fruit, they would die. But I, don't, I don't see that. I see them walking out, and the Bible says that they were thrown from the paradise. And the Bible says that God put an angel with a flaming sword that you, so that they will not come back. And then it dawned on me. It hit me. They did die because they were separated from God. 
Look, look what the Bible says. Can you put that up there for me, please? Ephesians chapter, chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. Look, 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 look at the dead living people. Let, let, me put, let, me, let, me say that, let me say that again. Dead living. How can you be dead and be living? Well, it's very simple. Let's look at the Bible. Look what it says. And you had quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. You know what that means? Quickened, made alive. Hallelujah. In other words, I was dead. Hallelujah. You were dead. My soul and my spirit were dead. I didn't have a relationship with God. I didn't know how to touch him. I didn't know how to communicate with him because sin separated me from God. I was dead to God. We were dead to God. But thank God that he quickened me. He gave me new life. He gave me, hallelujah, a resurrection. There was a spiritual resurrection. Look at this. Look. For yet he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Let's go to the next verse, please. We're in time past. Look at this. He walked according to the course of this world. In other words, when you're dead, hallelujah, to God, you are alive to the things of this world. You are alive to the king of the, oh, but yet the God of this world. That's pretty powerful stuff. I didn't realize that. Why do I need to be born again? Because I was born in death. You understand? The Bible says we're all formed iniquity. We were born in iniquity. We were born with sin. We are dead to God. Why do I need to be born again? Because I need to be born of my heavenly father. Thank God that he came to me and he revealed himself to me. And I was born of his spirit. Oh, what a wonderful thing. Where in times past you walk according to the course of this world. In other words, we're all doing the same old thing. Sin, sin, disobedience, more sin. And that's the way it was. Oh, but I was religious. You're a sinner. Oh, but as a good parent, you're still a sinner. Oh, but I'm a good person. I don't steal from anything. It doesn't matter. The Bible says if you break one commandment, you have broken them all. We are all sinners. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. Death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus. spirit of life it's not a, it's not in a catholic church it's not an organization it is a person and this person was holy from the beginning he never knew sin he was born without sin in fact he lived beyond that already he was from eternity hallelujah and the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and the word became flesh and the bible says Woo! That he came unto us, hallelujah, full of grace and truth. And why not say life? Amen. Look at this. Uh, do I look okay? Pastor, is it okay? Do I... oh, no. You know, when I'm, when I'm preaching at our church, my wife says, Oh, Lord, have mercy on my soul. Dear God, the Portuguese bell is going to show up all over the world. Have mercy. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're in time, past. Listen to me. Listen to me. Hey, you know how people say, ah, forget it. We're not, nobody's going to make it. Let me tell you something. Before I didn't make it, because in times past, I lived according to this word, the course of this world. But now I live another, I'm in another road. <laughs> I'm in another road, hallelujah. I'm in another road. His road, his name is Jesus. He said, I'm the way, I'm the life, and I am the truth, hallelujah. 
And he said, I am the truth, and the truth sets you free. I can bring you from death to hell, to, 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 to life. And that's what Jesus did. I, I, how can you forget that day that the Holy Spirit came inside of you? And you were In life, and I went. Ah! Man knocks on my door. The owner of my house. He lived on the first floor. I lived on the third floor. How could he hear me? I must have been pretty loud. Why? Oh, yeah, there is. I just met Jesus. What? I said, I'm sorry. It's just that I met Jesus right now. His wife drank more than anything else. Uh, and, 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 yeah, she did. I'd go down to the base. It was like fire. If you lit up a, 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 a match, he would go. Because just the hair that came out of your mouth. And the guy comes home. He's a bad boy. He knocks at the door. And he was like, green, green, green. Hey! Are you crazy? That's the door. Yeah, I am crazy. But Jesus, come on, give God a great big, great big hand, will you please? We were dead. We, we this, people that are dead, do they make their own decisions? Somebody else is making decisions for me, right? People that are dead, they are brought wherever they don't want to go. Am I right? That's the way we were. That's why Jesus said to, to Peter, said, hey, until now, you did, you did your own thing, but now someone's going to take you by the oh. Shown bad. Until now, you live by the course of this world, but now you're going to live according to my spirit, and my spirit brings life. Praise God. Walked according to the course of this world, according to the prayer. Dead people, they have a leader, the prince of. I don't want Jesus and I don't want hell. I'll just be in between. There is no in between. He's a Spanish young man. Wonderful. Wonderful. Married to a young American girl. Very beautiful. Her name is Crystal. They bought the house next to us. And I was praying, God, bring nice people here. You know, bring nice people, Lord. I, I, I hope my wife doesn't see this. My God, I'll get home and I'm really be dead. <sighs> so, no, please don't. I'll give you a couple of dollars. <laughs> so, this couple, I noticed they come and they, they bought the house. And I'd be in my backyard cleaning up or doing something. He'd come out there. I'm a born-again Christian. He says, my dad is a minister. My dad is a minister. But my dad, he's those old-fashioned, that if you, if you just look at something, you are you already sinned. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, his dad is a born-again Christian, loves God. He's older now. He's very sick, from what I understand. But what I'm trying to say is, he is trying to find an excuse. He said to him, you know what, man? He said, what about purgatory? He says, 
My friend, I have read the Bible frontwards, backwards, and up, down, and down, and down. I, I never found purgatory there. To me, purgatory is a dog with a lot of fleas. I said, there is no such thing. And he's trying to convince me that the reason why he doesn't go to the church is because there are different doctrines. I said, listen, my friend, there may be different doctrines, but there's only one God. And he's the only Savior. And the reason why you know that is because your dad put that inside of your heart. Thank God for people that are not ashamed of saying Jesus is the only way. Maybe I'm not perfect. Maybe everything doesn't seem right, but he continues to be God. Hallelujah. Continues to be the only way. Don't try to judge Jesus based on your dad and your mom. But our God, the Bible says he was tested in all things, but he never, never sinned. Perfect. Where in times past we walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the earth. There are people that say, I don't live for God, but I live for myself. My friend, there is no such thing as you living for yourself. Because if you don't live for God, you're living for the other guy. Do what I want. You think you're doing what you want. That is why you're drinking your life away. That is why you're that is why you go from one bed to another. Nothing seems to satisfy you. I know what I was one of those. I was one of those. I'm not proud of it. But it's what God did in my life. Hallelujah. When I met him, I became new. Hallelujah. I was born again. I got I don't care what's going on around me. I don't care what's the consequence. I know things are bad. But our God is still God, and he's still in control. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand. Look at this. This is where I throw everything out the window. I do my thing. Nobody tells me what to do. I live the way I like. No, you don't. You live according to the prince of this world. Of the power of the air, the spirit. Look at it, the spirit. Can you believe it? If you are not born again, you don't have the Holy Spirit. And the spirit that's in you is the spirit of a devil. <laughs> you know what Jesus you know what Jesus said to Paul I'm going to show you how much you're going to suffer for me today it's uh, everything is cool everything is alright you don't have to suffer Jesus already suffered oh really then why was Paul persecuted why was he almost stoned to death why was he thrown through a, 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 a wall and, and a basket to hide himself from, from the, the, those who were to kill him? I, I don't understand. What kind of gospel are they preaching? The gospel of feel good. Don't worry about it. God's going to give you a new house. And, and I, know, I know that God can do that, but that's not the whole thing. That's not the, that's not the pinnacle of the gospel. The pinnacle of the gospel is holiness. And you winning people for Christ. That is the if we are not so winners, we're missing. The Bible says that a wise man, he wins so. And the Bible says men and women, and women the same thing. Amen? But today, everything is okay. You can come as you are. Listen, if you think you're a woman, you're a man, it's okay. God loves you. That's not the gospel that I that I know. That's not the Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Uh oh. Yeah. Look at a spirit that worketh in the children of this soul. Dead. Dead. Matthew, please. Chapter 8. Hallelujah. My time is going. 
chapter 8, verse 22. Look what the Bible says. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 22 for me, please. But Jesus said unto him, follow me. You say, the Bible doesn't go into detail who this guy was. It's just one person from this. I will follow you, Lord. And Jesus says, follow me. Come on, let's go. He says, but wait, wait a minute, Lord. Let, 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 let me go bury the dead first. Says, hey, wait a minute. Let the dead bury the dead. He's talking about people that are in sin. They will bury people that are in sin. But you follow me because now you're going to have life. Let the dead bury the dead. Hallelujah. But you, hallelujah, follow me. I am not the God of death. I'm the God of living. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I got life and I got life in abundance. I got life here. I got life there. I got life everywhere I go. And when I get to heaven, it's up. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to the name of this Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Colossians, please. Chapter 2 and verse 13. Hallelujah. Look what it says. And you being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of the flesh. Now you need to understand this. A Jewish child at the end, they would be circumcised, meaning that he was belonged to the Jewish people, meaning that he was kind of like a sign of, a, of that he, was, he belonged to God. You know what I'm saying? But that was done in the flesh. Look what God says. Look what Paul is saying. Hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven all trespasses. Now I am not circumcised in the flesh. Now I've been circumcised in my heart. Hallelujah. It was not done by men. It was done by the Holy Spirit. And I've got life and life in abundance. You know what, man? You should look in the mirror every day and say, wow, I've got life eternal. Hallelujah. First Timothy, verse five, chapter 5, verse 6, please, for me. I'm about to end. It's 8.30. My wife is waiting for me. Praise God. But she that liveth in what? In pleasures. Look at this. This is what the Bible teaches. But she that liveth in pleasures... Is dead while she, what did I say from the beginning? Dead living people. Wow. I mean, isn't this awesome stuff? I mean, think about it. I mean, I, I, mean, I, where's the, I don't understand it. I just still got it. I mean, when you're dead, how can you see? You think? When you're dead, how can you, how can, how can you think you're dead? You know what I'm saying? The enemy's got you in darkness. And people that live in darkness, they don't know where they came from. They don't know where they're going. They don't know if they came from a monkey or they're going back as a monkey or coming back as a frog. I don't know about you. I ain't coming back as a frog. I'm coming back as many a root. I'm going to ever come back as an ant. You're going to die quick? I'm going to step on you. My brothers, let's stand, please. Can we stand? My time is about over. Dead living people. Living people that are dead. Look at this. <laughs> you don't live You see, you see, listen to me. I'm living, but yet I'm dead. Does that make sense? To a person it does, but to a non-Christian, Yes, I'm alive for Christ, but I'm dead to sin. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that great? Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Yes, I'm alive. Hallelujah. <laughs> but my body's got to die because when the Bible says we were crucified with Christ, I don't live anymore, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I live now is in the beloved of the Son of God. Oh, oh, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but you're alive. Give them some praise. People that are alive, they praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Dead living people, living dead people. Hallelujah. Guess what? When sin comes around, I'm dead. Oh, but when things of God come around, 
prophets talk in tongues. Hallelujah. Because that's from people that are living. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor. Amen. You know, thank you. Um, there's a very important about that scripture where he shared about let the dead bury the dead. You read the scripture before that. It says the disciple came to him and said, let me go bury my father. It, but the Jewish rendering of that in Hebrew is, let me go bury my father when he dies. In other words, he, he wasn't dying. He wasn't dead. He said, I want to go with, live with my father till he dies. And then after he dies, I'll come follow him. He said, no, 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 no. So I, wanna, I just want to end with this quick story for a moment. These three women, they, they died and they went to heaven. And they got to the pearly gates of heaven. And they said, well, if you want to come in, you've got you've to pass a test first. And they said, okay. So they went into this room. And the whole room was filled with ducks. And they said, you've got to go in that room. And the, it's very simple. Just don't step on a duck. So, okay. So they went in the room and... You know, packed with ducks, and oh, yeah. ducks are going everywhere. And this woman accidentally stepped on a duck. Well, all of a sudden, these two angels came, grabbed her by the arms, put a chain around her, and one of the ugliest men you ever saw in your life, she got chained to. And she said, I can't believe this. He said, well, that's your penalty. you got to be chained to this ugly man for the rest of your life. Second woman went for a little bit longer, you know, and... Oh, there she goes. She stepped on the duck. And here come the two angels, grabbed her, put a chain around him, brought even an uglier man than the first one. I said, this is your punishment. You've got to walk with this, this ugliest man for the rest of your life. So the third lady said, hey, I'm not doing that. No way. And so she went in that room, and she made sure she didn't step on any duck. And when the test was over, she came out and the apostle said to her, you know, you didn't step on a duck, that's wonderful. And all of a sudden, the angels came. She, they had a chain in this most beautiful man, handsomest man, beautiful man, well-built, you know, he was a beautiful man. And it was chained to her. And she goes, boy, I don't know what I did to deserve this. And the man said, well, I know what I did. I stepped on a duck. <laughs> All right, God bless you. Lord, we just pray that you would bless our going in, our coming out, our lying down, our rising up. Father, thank you for your word. It's always true. It is always alive and quick and powerful. Now let your word work in us, Father. And Lord, let us work your word as we go out into the world. We pray your divine protection. Surround them with your holy angels and protect them tonight. Until we meet again on Sunday, God, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.